Hello, this is Pastor Dennis Martin, and I wanted to make this short video about my experience one year ago today, August 20th. My wife, Lady Martin, took me to the hospital and dropped me off at the ER. I went in, they checked me in, they did a CAT scan, they took me to a holding room, hooked me up to all these different things. The doctor came in and asked had I been tested for COVID-19. I said no. He said, we're going to test you now. They tested me, he came back and said, your test came back positive. And I asked, well, are you going to admit me? He said, yes, we're going to admit you tonight. They admitted me to the hospital. And um, I never forget that I called my wife to say that they were admitting me. And while I was sharing that with her, she said, I've got something to tell you and I don't want you to hear from anyone else. So she said to me that one of my dear friends, Pastor Stefan Henderson, from Chicago that started with me at HT Holy Trinity. Uh, the first service he was playing for me had passed away. Uh, it was very difficult. Once they put me in a room, uh, I was there maybe a day and a half. Then they came and said, we've got to move you to ICU. When I heard those words, I was sort of troubled because whenever you hear ICU, that means that that's something very, um, you know, could be bad or whatever. And uh, so I, they put me in ICU. And of course, there was no one there to be able to come and visit. I was doing FaceTime with my wife. And uh, while in ICU, they put this brick, uh, thick breathing uh, tube on me for my oxygen. The doctor said to me, uh, your oxygen has maxed out and there's nothing else we can do. We're just sort of trying to get this uh, COVID-19 and this uh, things out of your lungs. They wanted me to sleep on my stomach. The doctor threatened to put me on a ventilator. He said, uh, you know, you, you maxed out and, and they kept looking at the numbers and drawing blood and all type of things. And while I was there, I was praying. I remember praying and laying hands on my chest, said, God, this is not supposed to end this way. And uh, I remember praying this prayer, Lord, give me a notable miracle that can't be denied. I preached that message a couple of years back and I said, God, I need a miracle. I need a notable miracle that can't be denied. And a few days later after they were giving me plasma and everything else, doctors came in and the nurse came in and said, you're officially out of ICU. And then they took me and placed me in another room and then upgraded me to another room and eventually uh, changed my uh, breathing thing to a very thin thing and eventually on that Sunday uh, the nurse came in early and removed the breathing tube and said that you no longer need this and the doctor came in and said we'll probably let you go home today well they let me come home without an oxygen tank without anything to help me breathe my lungs were still sort of uh, whatever they were I had my first virtual visit in about Three days after that, the doctor said to me, you're fortunate. He said, I've seen others and I've seen a lot of these cases and some of them didn't turn out the way yours turned out. He said, you're fortunate, which is really short of saying you're a miracle. He said, it's, it, you're fortunate because you came out of this. And he kept shaking his head and said, you came out of this. He said, your lungs were jacked up. That's the word he used, jacked up. They were pretty bad. And uh, I began to give God praise for bringing me through. And about uh, a month and a half later, I went in for another uh, test on my lungs. And he began to show me the x-rays of what they looked like then. And then I went in for another test with breathing and everything. And I had him to explain to me, uh, look at my x-rays and let me uh, film it and tape it and take pictures and explain to me what they saw and what it looked like. I'm going to share that with you now and I'll be back. Okay. All right. This is your front. This is your back. We're taking cross sections of your lung. This is your trachea, which is your main windpipe. And we're going to start to see here the right lung and the left lung. All of that looks like healthy lung tissue. And as we start to go down, you start to see the COVID pneumonia here, mostly on the right upper part of the lung. 
Now we're getting to the midsections of the lung. You see COVID all the way on the left side and all the way on the right side. So both lungs, pretty extensive involvement, more so on the right lung, all the way down both, both lungs. Okay, there you go. Over, you can see the difference, right? Oh yeah. So all of this is diseased lung and then this is healthy lung. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you see that my COVID was all in my lungs from the CAT scan. You can see my x-rays. Uh, I was really in bad shape. Um, didn't feel bad, but was in bad shape. Didn't know how serious it was. And then they let me come home. And this last test, he said to me, unless something happened and you just can't breathe, you are released. You don't have to come back. Cause I thank God that uh, he brought me out August 20th, I went in. August 30th, I came out uh, 10 days uh, in the hospital. I lost 20 pounds in 10 days. I tell you, I still haven't gained that weight back, thank God, but I lost uh, 20 pounds in 10 days, and then the Lord brought me through. I just wanted to share this with you. I remember when my daughter and uh, my wife picked me up and I'll show that video to you right now, too. My God. <laughs> oh, my God. Woo. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god daddy say hey to facebook <laughs> I remember when they picked me up and I came out, uh, they began to play that song in the car all the way home by John P. Key. I made it out. I made it out all right. God brought me out and I'm grateful. Two things I want to share with you before I close and that is, uh, you know, when God brought me out, I came out and I said to God, you brought me out for a reason. Others went in and didn't come out, uh, but you brought me out for a purpose. And whatever that purpose is, I want to fulfill that purpose. I don't believe God left me here just to sit around and wait for someone to give me something to do, to give me an appointment or to do whatever. I believe he left me for, here for a reason. I know he did. And I want to be about the father's business of doing what he left me here for. And I intend to do that no matter where it may be, no matter who I'm with. I intend to fulfill the purpose of God in my life and to do those things. Secondly, uh, I found out in the hospital that while I was laying there and all these things hooked up to me and all, all kind of monitors and, and all kind of things they given me, I found out something. And I came to realize that some things that we think are important are not as important as we think they are. They're not priority. They may seem like it, but they're not. When you think about it, uh, when I was laying there, a cord didn't make any difference. That purple cord, my title, my positions didn't make any difference. I was fighting for my life, standing at death's door, trying to get out of there, trying to make it home, trying to make it back to see my family, my friends, my church, my members. And none of that was important. None of it made any difference at that point. I want you to know that there are some things that change your life forever. There's some experiences you have that will change your life forever. It was a life changing experience to me. And I am blessed of God and thankful that God brought me out. And the thing that I want to do most is to please him and to complete my assignment and to do that that he's called me to do. I want you to know I want to thank every one of you that prayed for me and continue to pray. I thank you for your prayers. 
I believe that the prayer of the righteous, I believe that the saints and the prayers of those that love God pulled me off the COVID-19 death train. And I'm here and alive today to talk about it. Thank you so much. And I pray and trust that God will do great things for you. I pray and trust that God will bless you. And I believe this with all my heart since God brought me out that our best days are ahead of us and not behind. Thank you.